Alrighty, so in this session we are going to see how we can use the MongoDB driver to connect to MongoDB. Okay, so I have a separate folder where, we, where I'm writing this code and we'll be moving some of it in our uh, electronics uh, product REST API application. But this session and the next couple of sessions are going to be how we can use MongoDB effectively using MongoDB driver. Okay, so uh, as you know that product is our basic uh, component. We are actually selling or retrieving or uh, you know creating, updating electronics products as part of our electronics store product uh, project. Okay, so I have expanded on the definition of the product here. So we've got more fields than we had in our previous sessions. So these fields are ID, name, price, currency, quantity, discount, vendor, accessories, and SKU ID. You can see the price and discount are integer. Accessories is an array of, it's a slice. I keep saying array all the time. And the SKU ID is of a significant importance, and I'll explain that to you later. There is an ID field that I've added, and uh, this is uh, of primitive.object ID, and I'll explain that in just a moment. Also, you can see that uh, it's got tagging. So one is of type JSON, another is BASON. That also I'll just be getting to in a while. But this is a product definition that we'll be using uh, in our application as well, not only in just this MongoDB demonstration examples. And I've got two products that are instances of product. Okay. Uh, if you notice that in JSON and BASON tagging, for some of them I have omit on omit empty as um, the tag value right so that means that this particular field when it has a zero value it won't even show up in the database so it is as good as this field being undefined as opposed to it being zero so if this field is empty it is as good as this field is not even part of the product for a particular instance when you put that data in the database or if you let's say convert it to JSON which is kind of what we are doing here the same flag the same tag is applicable for BASIN uh, tagging as well okay I've got an iPhone 10 product you can see that it's 900 USD and the other things QID is 1234 and then I've got a trima. Okay, and it's got an accessory and all that, and it's not important. And now we'll be using MongoDB driver in this example. So I've imported a couple of uh, packages. So one of them is Mongo. Another is options under Mongo. Uh, there's this primitive from Basin. And then you've got context, uh, F FMT, and time. All right, so if you look at the main function here so what I'm doing first of all is I'm using Mongo to create a new client and I'll be using this client to actually uh, make a connection to my MongoDB database and this options field here this actually helps me uh, configure options that I'm not using right now so if your MongoDB requires a TLS connection if it requires username and password if you want the number of uh, connection if you want a connection pool to be there with some number of connections and all the stuff you can define right now I'm not defining anything like that because this is just the first demo on how to connect to Mongo database and then there's this apply URI so this is uh, the URI of MongoDB that we'll be connecting to and we saw that in our previous session that we are connecting to a local host a docker image that that's running mongodb it's mapped to our localhost for that is 27017 and that's all fine right uh, we get the client and we get an error if the error is not nil then we get ahead all right apart from that i'm also getting a context object and context is kind of an important thing if you uh, haven't actually worked on context before that much well context is 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 required to actually when you have a request being sent or a particular process getting executed across multiple machines in the distributed application and at some point you want to cancel or uh, uh, 
cancel that application or cancel that request because of some reason then you want all the other interested parties to be you know to be in the know that this event has happened so context is kind of used for that purpose uh, I'll expand on that maybe in some other sessions so context is an object that is uh, required for many of the methods here as the first argument as you'll see uh, as we go with some other examples but usually that's the convention even in Google when they write Go code they expect that every method should have the first argument as context that's kind of the rule and usually in a request response model it's a desirable thing to have but some people have uh, some people don't really like it and they think that that should have been a better way instead of context in fact a lot of other programming languages have either nothing like context and they have to actually find tricky ways of doing things that we are using context here for or they have something even better than context but that's a discussion for another day right now we are just saying that context is an object that we get using context with timeout so this practically means that this context is going to be waiting for a 20 second timeout to whoever it's actually applied to. So right now it is applied to con client.connect and it is this client that's going to connect to MongoDB and it's been supplied with context object. And if the 20 minutes have passed and you're still not able to connect to, uh, to MongoDB then it's going to actually fail. Okay and it's going to return an error and we have to handle it somehow right now we're just printing it okay so uh, then I have this client dot database using this I get the database reference and then inside the database then when I do collection then I, uh, collection against a particular collection name and then I get a collection and I'll be updating records against a collection so in, in the previous session we covered right so in MongoDB you have a database inside database you got multiple collections and inside each collection you got multiple documents so we pick up one doc collection where we update uh, or insert the documents right now if you connect to the database and the Tronics database a database named Tronic doesn't exist then MongoDB is gonna create one for you and if the products collection inside Tronics doesn't exist, it's going to create that one for you as well, right? And then what you do is that you, inside the collection, you insert one. So this method is for inserting one document. You could insert multiple documents at the same time, but in this example, we are just keeping it simple. We are inserting just one document, and again, we are passing the context or background, which is a new context than this. This was used here and that was it it's not being used elsewhere but uh, you could use it practically but context or background is kind of uh, kind of a safe thing to do in this case and then you're passing iPhone 10 as uh, the struct that you want to insert all right and uh, as the struct that you want to insert and then you get a response and all you're doing is that you are respond you are picking up the response and you are printing the inserted ID and then you are actually type casting it to object ID and I'll, I'll get to that in just a moment but let me go back to the MongoDB compass and I think I had some uh, sorry I think I had uh, run some things before this uh, session so I'm just gonna delete that quickly so that I can show it to you afresh Alright, so I've got, a, I've got a database that is as good as new. There's no other custom collection or database here. And I'm going to run this right now. Okay, so what happens is I get a print statement, uh, a timestamp from this statement here. But if you go back to the database, you refresh and you see that you've got Tronics. And Tronics is a database, products is a collection inside it. You click on products and then you get this nice little object getting inserted all right uh, another thing is if I run this again it's gonna insert another document with the same data although a different object ID all right 
and uh, I can also do the same for I have what I had what schema I can save it and this time I have a trima here now what we did here we inserted the same object twice and we shouldn't be doing that actually in a in an actual database application we should be validating whether something with the same sort of property exists or not but right now I'm, I'm just telling you that if you insert uh, if you run the query again it's gonna create the same object with the same properties but with a different object ID again all right now object ID here is kind of a hash okay if you don't provide this object ID for example what I'm doing here is I'm using primitive package and I'm creating a new object ID if you don't provide this field it's still MongoDB is still gonna create a object ID for you so let me just show that to you right now so I'm going to comment this out right and I'm going to save it and this time I'm going to just change the description so that you have something to see here all right when I run this I get another product here right so this one and you can see that it's got an object ID as well but it's got a zero object ID okay and that's I think that should have that's because uh, it's, it's picking it up from here I should have commented this out as well so let's do it again okay I think uh, non field ID in the struct all right okay uh, strict typing sometimes you hate it okay so there's gonna be a fifth document here okay and if you see that this one has the kind of object ID that I didn't supply so MongoDB created one for me okay so object ID is kind of a hash and it's got uh, it's got a couple of parts in it as part of it so object ID is supposed to be a 12 byte uh, it's going to be a 12 byte you can say an ID not 12 characters 12 byte and it's got uh, each of those bytes actually can be broken down to multiple places and one of those pieces is actually the timestamp so when I insert one object what I get as part of uh, the response is the inserted ID okay so this response object if you see that it's got inserted ID and that inserted ID doesn't have anything but I have to typecast it to primitive dot object ID and when I do that as part of the primitive object ID I can actually do a bunch of things for example I can check if it is zero or not I can marshal it to JSON I can even see the timestamp so this what I'm trying to say here is that object ID is not just a hash you can also retrieve the timestamp from that object ID okay and that way you can actually find out when this particular product was created which is good okay so all these uh, values have been fast from the time that they were created so it's a, it's a good thing to do and of course you can also have an additionally a created it or updated it field but just so you know that you can also get it from the id id field okay now that was all for this session we we saw how we can use the client using mongo mongo new client and how we can connect to the database and the collection and how we can insert one simple document we just had to use the uh, the initialized struct here right we didn't have to use a pointer value or anything but there, there are multiple ways to actually do the same thing okay and we, we will get to that uh, in uh, in the next session so for now that was all I wanted to cover and thank you bye